Hey guys, what's up? I know it's been a little bit, but here I am back with another video. Um, and on this one, I'm going to slowly, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a, of an introduction and then I'm going to eventually move into, um, one of the things that I want to talk about here. Um, I would say one of the most important revelations that I received a long time ago was probably what seemed like the most basic instructions that anyone could ever receive. But yet, it ended up being one of the most complex, basic instructions that anyone could ever receive. Uh, I struggled for years with these most basic instructions because at the time, my consciousness was still at a very low level, and during that time, I had gotten caught up in what I call the average crowd. I'm talking about the kind of average crowd most people generally get caught up in. Uh, caught up in things like, such as uh, religion war, politics, and so on and so forth. Um, Illuminati conspiracies and all the rest of that stuff that really and truly doesn't even matter. Um... I mean, it may matter to the general public, but as an individual, it, it really has no, it really has no worth. And for many years, you know, it basically, it, it sent me in a vortex of redundancy. And that's basically what it means to uh, get caught up in, into this, this matrix type of reality of low level consciousness it's basically just that it is a vortex of redundancy so it wasn't until i finally began to start to question everything that i knew and everything that i didn't know on an equilateral basis and allow for each idea to truly present itself that i finally began to start to connect the dots and bring to the surface the hidden connections between one another. Um, th this is what, basically what extensive researching day in and day out can and eventually will lead to down the line. Basically, when you start to question everything that you know and everything that you don't know venturing outside of the box as i've talked about in the past plenty of times on other videos um doing heavily heavy extensive research i mean i know some people don't really have the time for that but um it's it's well worth it it's what in my opinion i believe it is well worth taking that time to you know, no matter what it is you're doing, you know, in some way, in some way, shape, form or fashion to, you know, to get that, to get in that info. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about commitment that makes you want to truly learn what the universe is all about. And it all starts from a simple questioning of wanting to know who you are because you finally realize that you're being limited in what you know on purpose by society and for a reason that just never really and truly made sense. However, in most people's cases, um, do, doing as such, uh, it's, it's not really an easy thing to get around for the fact that most of us have these distractions. It can be really hard for one to get around these distractions. A big one being just, you know, having an everyday job. A lot of times a job can be so energy draining that by the time you get home, you know, all you want to do is relax maybe eat and go to bed 
And I say maybe eat because I know some people are so drained and so tired from coming from work. All they want to do is come home and just plop straight on the bed <laughs> or are on the couch and fall asleep there. You know, um, you know, it, it basically it draws away the free time and energy that you need to stay focused. Then, you know, you got your other fearing anomalies like paying bills, uh, making sure you got enough to eat from day to day. Uh, or even just simply trying to survive from day to day, literally, you know, fearing for your life day in and day out in some people's cases, uh, you know, all, all these things, all these things is what keeps the mind busy and what keeps your focus and attention off of what's truly important. And not to mention, it keeps you basically f the furthest possible, f further away as possible from, you know, any kind of peace whatsoever and you know and that peace is very much needed in order to try to ascend yourself to higher levels in order to learn more than what you know you know you need time and you need peace you need quiet you need you know you need to be in a serene environment that basically allows you to do these things but anyways um but getting back to what my original statement about there being nothing new under the sun which basically means there is no progression without the energy permitted by the sun is which also means that everything you learn on for instance planet earth or Gaia, or Ki, which, by the way, is actually the name, is, is actually the same planet. <clears throat> also has its limits on how much you can learn, even though even that knowledge, even that level of knowledge is extremely extensive in itself, and may seem like it can go on forever, but just think, you know about all the things that you could learn beyond the sun as there are tons of sun stars out there that holds different information from the age of the stars since all stars are not the same age you know every star has a different magnetism every star has a different uh, uh heat level every star is different in size you know this basically explains the age of the stars simple science you know from a regular star to a super giant you know so um and, and plus two you know being one connected to nature itself or just being a nature being you know is what truly allows this kind of a connection to learn to heal and to rise within and without through the mind that connects to the beyond, to the endless black aquarium known as the universe. But before all that, we must learn what we can hear on this planet first before we are able to graduate to higher status, to higher knowledge, to ascend. Therefore, we before we even do that, we have to allow our own consciousness to rise, to uncover all the hidden knowledge that is buried in plain sight. And why do I say buried in plain sight? Well, though we may read something somewhere on the surface that may seem legit on a physical level, it doesn't always necessarily mean it's the full meaning. It doesn't always necessarily mean there is only one layer. Sometimes even the most simple phrases have different layers of information hidden within. Even the very Bible <clears throat> that many are so tied up to can also be looked at and read in this manner. 
So I'll tell you a little truth there about that. Um, even though I know many are, <laughs> many are not going to want to believe what I have to say. But you must understand that even though the Bible is truthfully made from a collection of different texts, different ancient texts, such as the ones from ancient Sumeria and ancient Kemet, and so on and so forth. Um, it is also written in layers on a esoteric level in which, by the way, only simply means to be intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialized knowledge or interest. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything people like to call paganistic or evil. In fact, using, long, using the line to say that something is paganistic is used in such a manner to draw away your attention from uh, that particular idea while they basically still study it on the side. But getting back to the Bible, for instance, um, and again, I'm only using this book as an example because it's what I know best from my previous studies in uh from before um, that sometimes you know you'll you'll come up on a scripture that has absolutely no simple meaning or makes no sense at all on a level of reality on you know on a physical level on something that's simple is mostly because once again it's uh it's because that particular phrase was created in layers for instance, um, I believe this scripture is in Matthew. I'm not sure which chapter or verse it's in. I'm sure some of you other people know, and you could probably look it up. But the scripture is, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay, to read this verse on a simple level makes no sense whatsoever because, first of all, on a physical level, we have two eyes. Not one, not a single eye, but we are, but we are talking about a single eye. And if we're talking about a single eye, then it is quite obvious that we're talking about the first eye within, also known as the pineal gland, which is indeed a single eye, in which then, instead, we're now moving into something that is indeed esoteric or on a larger scale, something metaphysical, which means information beyond the physical. But again, this is this, this very scripture still has layers okay the use of the word light is also a metaphor a metaphor which is talking about basically enlightenment because obviously when your first eye or your third eye is opened then it means that you are indeed enlightened okay or for instance, we could jump back. Hold on a sec. We could jump back into where is it? Numbers twenty-one and eight. Which honestly, I don't even know why I'm going back over this because I had already done a video on this particular scripture. One sec. Getting a little dark in here. Okay, um, but yeah, let's see, over here in the Old Testament, we're over here in Numbers 21, Numbers 21, and let's start at, uh, hmm, let's start at verse, let's start at verse 5 here, it says, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. 
and our soul loaf hates this light bread so the, it says in the next verse the lord sent fiery serpents among the people and the serpents bit the people and a lot of the people died okay but but here it is in the next verse therefore the people came to moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the lord and against thee pray unto the lord that he takes away the serpents from us and moses prayed to the people and the lord sent said to moses make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looks upon it shall live okay so moses made a fiery serpent okay listen to that verse now made a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole first of all as you can see in this verse we're talking about serpents we're talking about snakes okay snakes on fire if you burn a snake in real life it dies so we're talking about a serpent that is naturally on fire that's mind you still alive <laughs> okay and it's set upon a pole now a serpent has no feet no arms no legs okay it just slithers upon the ground like a worm all right and uh in order to get a snake on a pole there's only one possible way to get that snake on a pole and the re and the only way to get that snake on a pole that makes sense is to wrap the snake around the pole okay because that's the only way for a snake to be able to hold on to anything okay so and once again i've already made a video on this um let me see here this is cooking here you can find this video on my channel here hold on a sec that'll be number that'll be this video right here astral knowledge stop that'll be astral knowledge part two hidden ancient universal scriptures and if you would like to read more into that um i get a whole lot deeper and uh, <laughs> a whole lot deeper than um you know just basically of what that verse is talking about and what that verse makes or you know what kind of sense that verse makes on you know on uh, multiple levels not just one so but as you can see from the picture you know this is the only way for a serpent to wrap around the pole but it's very interesting here that you know this is obviously the typical hospital sign that we see you know a serpent on a pole wrapping itself and it is within a six pointed star mind you this is not a five pointed star it's not a pentagram that's only five sides this has six okay this is something completely different so once again you know there's another scripture that has layers okay and just to fast forward here as we're talking about that symbol which we know as to be a star tetrahedron this star tetrahedron okay is very natural okay it's something that happens naturally in even nature itself okay so <clears throat> so there's another one with multiple layers as i was saying okay when we start getting into scriptures like this that start to bring out things like the flower of life okay we have now we now have spiritually and officially gone 
beyond the simple earth. Okay, we've gone beyond the simple earth knowledge. Okay, we're, we're going into something meta. We're going beyond into something metaphysical. Okay. <clears throat> we're moving into something that is more natural in nature itself. Okay, something universal. Something that has universal origins. Okay, even even when we look at shapes like octagons, pentagrams, tetragrams, hexagons, triangles, even circles, um, or even the more complex ones like the star tetrahedron, which is basically the same shape as the Star of David or the Seal of Solomon. It's the exact same thing, regardless. Uh, they all have universal origins that have nothing to do with being pagan or any of that other. I know some people still absolutely refuse to believe that, but hey, that's your ego, and you take that as far as you want to take it, okay? Because, well, you know, while while we're on the subject of the ego, um, if if you if I go if you go back into that verse here, uh, what is it? Numbers twenty one and five. The way the people spoke on here this is where and where you know, basically they're being. You know, Moses took them out away from according to the book oppression, from being in Egypt. Okay, um, but these people are being very ungrateful. Okay, and they're they're just basically allowing their egos to run wild. Okay, the ego only feeds itself what it wants, and most of the time, it's 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 more negative than positive. Okay, because that's what the ego is about. Okay, that's what the whole uh, that's what the whole forty days and forty nights uh, things is is talking about. That's honestly everything that has to do with forty all through the Bible, and you can find it in here. Like it's probably hundreds of times uh written all over the bible it's it stands for uh number the number 40 which is basically the number four which basically is like the number for trials trials judgments etc um change transformation okay you must go through this transformation in other words uh getting rid or suppressing your ego or suppressing the ego that feeds itself like a parasite basically it's like a parasite you know it only feeds itself um what it likes like the supposed candida albicans it feeds off of sugar it only wants you to eat sugar so what do you do you actually eat sugar because this thing is literally it, it this is why people eat and eat and eat and eat because they can't and and they and they never ever really and truly get full is because these things are just literally sucking up your all your nutrients etc and you know it's only telling you to eat what you want to eat because the thing has gotten into your mind so you know, it's the same way. It's the same way with the ego. So in order to, uh, you know, in order to, if you would, if you want to raise your consciousness, for instance, or to pick up or to, to pick up more knowledge, to be able to learn or want to even learn more knowledge, you must suppress the ego first. Okay, which means you have to go through this transformation, the 40 days, 40 nights, or 40 days in the desert, 40 days in the wilderness. You know, I'm pretty sure you've heard that scripture anywhere in there. You know, it's it's a symbol of transformation, trials. Okay, once you go through that trial, through numerous meditation, which is one way to do it for sure, um day in day out you know as much as possible basically is what allows you to make the complete transformation suppress the ego 
and rise above your and rise above to your higher self okay <clears throat> in which then you know that's when we start really getting into the esoteric ideas you know with the seven chakras the dna etc these hidden block codes within also known as the tree of life yes the tree of life is also known as dna which is also known as kabbalah so kabbalah is basically just more symbolism for a secret code that is basically within so the more you unlock these codes okay the more you just intuitively start to know more start to be able to do more you know you, you start to you start to move into a whole new territory that you probably been unfamiliar with your entire life okay so backing it up way back again here backing it up a little bit went a little far there to the whole kabbalah thing but just so you know just so you know when we're talking about that that is what we are talking about okay it ties in with the flower of life and if you know what the flower of life is, you would know that that is also very natural in nature itself. Okay. <clears throat> but they basically, they all stem from a base universal knowledge, which is known as Metatron's cube. Listen to the word Metatron. Okay. In which then we are now dealing with that word meta, meaning beyond so metatron who is also known as or thought as being an archangel which uh, many say is um was uh the supposed enoch that walked with god or that was taken up and walked with god as or an enoch walked with god as the uh as the story says um, supposedly because of this function, um, the reason why he was taken up as that, because he, um, he possessed this function as a heavenly scribe, which is kind of funny because that's kind of like the same story as Tehuti in the comedian, in the ancient comedian Egyptian story. So you got two people that <laughs> are like basically almost seems like the same person How ironic but anyways um but we'll we'll get in, uh get into that another time so it's uh it's ironic though that this metatron's name means beyond matrix be meaning beyond reality beyond the reality as we perceive it the matrix you know a lot of people just you know from the movie a lot of people talk about you know the matrix now you know getting out of the matrix doing this out of the matrix moving outside of the matrix well when you're talking about moving outside of the matrix this is what you're talking about you're talking about moving beyond the matrix <laughs> you get it you know it's you're going from you know what you see in reality with your own two physical eyes to moving into something that is uh that that's more metaphysical in nature okay so these are the sort of things that we're talking about here um and again when we revert we can you know we can still always revert back to the simple things like the shapes you know that uh, reverse its origins beyond the matrix it says um, when we look at uh, certain shapes like the um, like the star that we were talking about which in the last video I explained is a two-dimensional figure of a Merkaba okay which ironically um, just so happens to be within the Bible and it means chariot you know swing low sweet chariot okay obviously we might be we're talking about something that that moves around we're talking about something that that flies you know what i mean so 
what we're talking about here is this glow this huge glowing energy because once you activate the merkaba physically like you have literally activated this ball of energy around you which from far away looks like a flying glowing orb yes merkabas are basically flying ufos you're correct so talking about this same idea though talking about the star tetrahedron and getting back to you know life and nature itself we find the same exact shapes here found microscopic views of snowflakes these are real microscopic views of what snowflakes really do look like okay the microcosmic snowflake all right so just talking about you know the the energy that falls from the sky all right to you know to the lily pet uh the lily the petals of the uh, lily flowers all right and you know we can even go even deeper than that you know we can even go to the to the subatomic level of atoms all right we still see you know this is perceiving you know this is what these shapes really do look like but as you can see you know it's still it's it's still this within the same uh the the same shape the same universal base knowledge uh, also known as metatron's cube but basically you know that same shape and everything um star david seal solomon um you know even the kabbalah being a part of the sh um the flower of life um even even the shapes like going back to the shapes when we start talking about sound we start talking about frequency vibrations lights all that stuff um you can sound sound itself is basically free energy um that's basically what it is you can you can create light from using sound so why haven't we done that i don't know um but every shape has its own sound um even when we talk about shapes and numbers have its own sound which is just basically a frequency a frequency an energy is what it is it's just basically energy because energy cannot be destroyed it can only be transferred right so We got shapes, numbers one through nine, because that's all there is. When it comes to numbers, there's only one through nine. There is no other number beyond that. Everything else is just like if we're looking at 500 or 360, <clears throat> for instance, out of that, we get we get nine. OK, which is a perfect circle. OK, the number of eternity is what it is. So every time we see something that's number nine, you know, which comes from this circle shape, which it's the same shape of our moon and our planets and our sun. Okay. This is why they go on for eternity or this is why they're made to basically go on for eternity. Um, unless something catastrophic or crazy happens, but let's hope not. So, but, uh, getting into a little bit more about the shapes here and metatron's cube um i i actually want to i actually do want to go ahead and go into that just a little bit here just so you can get a little bit more of an idea of what the hell i'm talking about here okay uh first of all as we know metatron's cube is universal knowledge it's metaphysical meaning it's beyond the physical okay Things that happen beyond the physical can indeed manifest ourselves into the physical as we see the same thing with, as I showed you before, with the snowflake and also as I showed you with a typical flower design, okay? Um, we can even go as far as looking at the atom, okay? 
And when we're talking about Metatron's cube, we're talking about this thing is called sacred geometry. All right. And this is basically, this is basically like almost basically like the key to life. It's like the whole blueprint of life in a way. So to tie in a couple things here, okay. Star of David, Seal of Solomon, um, let's see what else. Tie in Kabbalah, Flower of Life, all that stuff, okay, all that. As I told you before, the Flower of Life, which as you see in this little symbol right here, okay, the Flower of Life is uh, is contained inside of Metatron's cube. Now, as I showed you before with the shapes here, see, here's your star tetrahedron. This is a six pointed star here. Okay. It's a six sided star. You cannot see it in the 2d form here because as you, as you see, it's in a three, four dimensional type of form here. Okay. You got, looks like about four, three or four different actual, uh, pyramid shapes all interlocking with each other which i mean like i said this is basically what your star of david is all about right here okay and every one of these little shapes here that you see before you all have their own sound the cube has its own sound the tetrahedron has its own sound the star tetrahedron has its own sound, his its own sound, because as you get more complex into it, uh, the sound starts to become more high pitched. Okay, so if we're talking about beings on a higher level, okay, such as the star tetrahedron, obviously you're gonna get a high pitched sound, high frequency. Okay, this is what the whole raise your frequency thing is all about here. Because here's the thing, all right. Um, I know there's a lot of people, you know, on YouTube that uh, they, you know, they talk about, oh, uh, you know, the peace and the love and you know, and the, you know, the real fuzziness and all that, you know, all that cute stuff and everything, you know. I mean, that's all cool and everything that it is. But at the same time, too, you know, while you're sitting there with all that positive, positive, positive. You know, thing is, we need balance is what we need. You know, balance is the key. So, and I'm not saying that not, uh, that being positive is bad. No, of course not. That's why it's positive. Duh. But, you know, it has to get to a point where you really and truly are trying to move beyond. You know, like after a while, you know... You, you, when, when you hit one level, you got to graduate up to the next level, okay? And here's the thing, though. You can graduate up to the next level, but in order to graduate up into that next level and stay on that level, you have to, you, like, you literally have to change your way of living, your whole lifestyle, in order to stay on that level, because when you get up to that level and then you end up bouncing back and forth, you know, you, you know, you want to get there and then you fall back. You want to get there and then you fall back. You know, when you, as you keep jumping back and forth like that, you know, you are making yourself susceptible, more susceptible to a spiritual attack. So this is why, you know, instead of, you know, just going around and, you know, listening to what people say like you like sitting here right now you're listening to me talk i'm telling you all this stuff that you may or may not have known about um you know and and that's all cool and everything but at the same time you know you got to go and do your own research as well and on top of that you got to start doing things that uh will actually will actually help you go beyond where you're trying to go okay like you know taking all the like eating healthy and everything you know eating your you know your fruits your vegetables and all that good stuff eating natural uh going natural going natural is great all right going natural is like it's like basically the first step okay but 
once you hit that first step, you got to what? You got to keep going up the steps. So you start going natural. All right. And then from there, you start getting you have to start getting a little more detailed and actually taking like taking other things here that will actually help you move beyond uh, such as uh, actually taking a, taking the metals. Um, and how to do this um, because you know a lot of people are not very fond of the idea of for, uh, let's for, uh, let's say consuming any of these uh, in these metals meaning these metals on their monatomic level because obviously you can't just take metals it's you know because then once it's solid it's poisonous so what you have to do is you have to get them on a monatomic level Okay, so there's iron, for instance. You know, a lot of people uh, get iron when they when they actually do eat cereal. Because people still eat cereal. I know it. I see it all the time. I saw someone eating cereal today. But, you know, it's not my position to, you know, tell them that, you know, to eat the cereal or not to eat the cereal. You know, a lot of times people say the cereal is bad for you. And, yeah, but, you know, it's not really going to stop anybody, now, is it? from uh, doing what they want um, because they, they have free will. You know, that's that's one of the laws of the universe. You do have free will to do as you please. Um, but what I'm saying here is, you know, for people, for instance, that are seeing the numbers, you know who you are. I know you're out there and you know you see the numbers, okay? And when you see those numbers, you have to think of it as like this. You have to think of it as a... Uh, basically like a phone call okay it's like your phone's ringing it's every time you see these numbers it's like the phone starts ringing so after a while when you keep seeing it keep seeing it keep seeing it it's like the phone is ringing off the hook so it's up to you to answer the call because once you finally answer the call they stop okay and sometimes they just keep going back you know they keep re-ringing and everything you know to keep you on that same path you know you re especially when you see numbers like 9 11 and 11 11 okay because we're talking about the energy of one and the energy of nine okay alpha and omega but we're also talking about the energy 11 which is a gateway but we're talking about one we're talking about direction okay we're talking about redirection or guidance guidance through a gate Okay, and the nine means basically endings, completions. So whenever you see those numbers combined like that over and over and over, somebody's telling you to move on. Even when you start seeing the number 1111, it's the same thing. Okay, when you, here's a perfect example. Is when I say 1111 is like walking through a gate. It's like walking through a door. Well, here's what you can do right now. You can look at your door right now and what you got. You have two frames, one on the left, one on the right. And then what? You got another. You got a. You got another side. You got your floor and you got your top. Okay. Two floors and think of that as one. Okay. So you got two at the top, two ones, and then two on the side, two ones. Okay. Eleven, eleven. Okay. It's like walking through a door, walk through a gateway, moving beyond. Okay. So. Yeah. You know, for those people like that, you know, you, you got to, you know, you got to keep moving forward. If moving forward is truly what you want to do, because, again, you still have this choice. It's up to you. But if you like I said, if you don't answer the call, you know, you, you're not going to. You're not, you're not really going to go anywhere. And, you know, you don't want to be the one to end up keep running back in circles or jumping back and forth. So, again. Now, when I talk about these monatomic golds and these monatomic platinums and silver or iridiums, all these things, okay, um, let me just tell you now, I've been taking this stuff for like a year now, and as you can see, uh, it hasn't made me crazy or anything like that. It does absolutely nothing to you, um, you know, from a mental standpoint and all that. Now, what I will say it does is it definitely seems to uh really make you more focused see and that's the key right there when you're focused you can concentrate better when you can concentrate better you can learn better and when you learn better you get better you get smarter you know what i'm saying this is why they say that 
some of these things actually uh, increases IQ. Okay, because when you take all those things in consideration, um, you know, that's 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 basically one of the things that, you know, you absolutely must have in order to actually really ascend to that next level. You got to have focus is what I'm talking about here. You got to have concentration. So you got to do something to keep your focus on, because right now no one is really focused nowadays. Okay, no one is really focused. You see it on the road, you see it in the store, you see it, you see it everywhere, you see it at work. Hell, you see it at home. Okay, it's just one of those things here. And that's the whole point here to keep your focus off what's really important. But anyways, let me jump back on here again uh, about the shapes, about these shapes and everything. Uh, the Metatron's cube, okay. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can also talk about, let's see, um... Well, here we go right here in the in the corner right there. See, Hold on, let me right here in the bottom left right there. You know, you see this symbol right here. You know what that is, right? Well, of course, you know, it's called the it's the Kabbalah. And as you can see, it is a part of the flower of life. OK, this is about life. This isn't about death. This isn't about hell. This isn't about uh, anything dangerous. OK, and would you look if you can look uh, close enough to this, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the shape of the snowflake in this in this very photo right here going out this way and then going out that way the same photo of the snowflake that i showed you earlier in the video so as you can see if you see the same shapes in nature and we see the same shapes written in here then obviously this stuff must not be bad but a lot of people don't want to believe this because the ego will not allow them to believe this OK, you got to go on that. You got to go on that trial if you want to put all that stuff behind you. But uh, anyways, um, that's pretty much all I have for right now. Um, I, I would like to go into more right now, but I think I've definitely talked enough for this time around. Um, next time around, I go into a little more detail about the numbers, shapes and uh, the sound, because honestly, that's a whole that's a whole nother video long of you know video long length of information once again so with that being said hope i uh was able to i don't know maybe shed some light maybe do a little you know educate on certain things that some people knew or some people that uh that what you know what they didn't know and so on and so forth but um that's all I got for y'all for right now. So that being said, until next time, you know, y'all stay healthy out there. Stay peaceful. Stay peaceful. Don't let people drive you crazy, even at your job, you know. And if you can, you know, try to find that, try to find that peaceful time, you know, try to find that time where you could just kind of sit back, relax and think about things, you know, or even try to go into meditation, you know, meditation takes practice, you're not going to get any results from the first time off, just like everything else. So that's it. Peace to y'all. And see you next time.